Hello and welcome back to Jimbo's PC Builds. Today I'm going to do another cooler compared video. Previously I've been comparing coolers to the AMD stock cooler. However, the chip I was using was an AMD 2600, which is not the most challenging of chips to throw at any cooler. And even your most basic cooler could do pretty well on that chip. So I decided to upgrade my test bench. So I've upgraded my test bench to an Intel i7 10700K. Obviously this means I've had to upgrade my motherboard as well. And I've gone for an Asus Prime Z490-A. It's a pretty decent motherboard. But obviously changing the processor and motherboard means that any tests that are done prior to this, I can't really use the data. So what I've decided to do is I've gone back and I've retested all the coolers I've tested so far. So the Noctua cooler, the NMAX cooler, etc, etc. I've retested them. I've also added a new cooler to the mix. This is a Red Dragon Reva cooler, which you can pick up for under $30 from, say, Micro Center. Also, I've received several comments from um, from viewers, and I do thank you for those comments, looking to expand the coolers that I um, look to test. So look at, say, looking at a, a liquid cooler, an all-in-one cooler, that kind of good stuff. Also, maybe up to more of a premium type of cooler. So most of the coolers I've looked at so far tend to be more budget-friendly type ones because I was comparing directly to the free cooler that came with an AMD CPU. So to this end, what I've done now is I've, I've expanded my testing to try and be a bit more thorough. Every cooler that I put on the CPU, I'm actually doing a thorough heat soak. Easier said than done that line, I tell you. Cocked up too many times. Anyway, so once I did, completed the heat soak, I then made sure I did a thorough set of uh, Cinebench runs to give an average. So all of the results I'm bringing up now are full averages based on the results that I took over several runs. To expand the list of coolers that I can test, I've got to be able to compare apples to apples. So to do so, I've created a set of parameters that I'm going to score every cooler on. So let's have a look at the parameters that I'm going to throw at every cooler. I'm going to go for bass sound, which is basically when the fans are idle on the seat on the cooler. This is the general sound it makes. So it's in decibels and it's going from less than a uh, greater than 35, which will get you one point and less than 34, which will get you five points. The average score on Cinebench if it's less than 4,700, then you get one point. If it's greater than 4,800, it gets you five points. The average max temp, if it's over 90 Celsius, you only get one point. If it's below 60 Celsius, then it gets you five points. The average max sound, so basically the highest noise it makes while cooling the CPU during the test runs. If it's over 50 decibels, you get one point. If it's less than 39 decibels, you get five points. Then there's price thrown into the mix, and I've also gone for ease of install, and I've gone for design stroke build. So basically, if it's a good looking cooler, how easy to install, that kind of stuff. And for those last two, because they're generally opinionated, so they're not really based on stats, I've only given a max range of one to three points. So what this means is I'll be able to directly compare all the coolers to, uh, with each other. For instance, all-in-one coolers tend to be more expensive, but they tend to perform better. But they also can be more of a pain to install, whereas a cheaper cooler will obviously be less money, and are generally easier to install and don't perform as well. So basically, by scoring them this way, I'm going to create a uh, cooler league table, which will basically be able to compare any cooler that I've reviewed to one another to basically make your mind up based on the information you've got in front of you to see, you know, which which cooler do I want to buy, which investment do I want to make. You know, keep in mind, if you're buying an AMD 2600, you don't really need a very fancy, very expensive all-in-one cooler, whereas if you're buying a 10700K, a 10900K, or an R9-5950X, you might need one of the top coolers, so then it's worth making the extra investment. So I'm trying to do it in a way that will give you the information you need. And the 10700K is a hot CPU, so hopefully it'll answer those questions. All right, so without further ado, let's see how all of the coolers I've tested so far did, and also how the Red Dragon did compared to those. So let's have a look at base temps first. You can see that the Contact 12, the Hyper 212 Evo and the Red Dragon Reaver all were at 32 Celsius when the cooler was idle. The Noctua was slightly above that at 33. I'm emphasizing at this point the room temperature. I can't try to keep it as, as close at all tests. And most of the tests I read it, I did all at the same time. So in this day, that should be good. But there was obviously slight fluctuations in room temperature. 
So I wouldn't pay too much attention to a very small change on the base temperature. And especially the likes of Noctua because it likes to keep itself silent and idle. The Enimax um, fit didn't do so well. It was at 34. So that's two Celsius difference, which isn't a great deal, but it's enough for you to pay attention to. The base sound. As I just said, the Noctua didn't perform too well at base temperatures, and that's because it runs really quiet on idle. So it was the quietest of the coolers by a country mile. The Hyper 212 then came next, and then followed by Contact 12 and the NMX Fit. The Red Dragon Reva, were, even at idle, was a very noisy boy. Cinebench scores. He can see the Contact 12 did actually very well. It got a good score. It actually managed to beat both the Noctua cooler and the Hyper 212, which was a bit of a surprise. The Red Dragon cooler actually did okay. It did very, very well. Even though it's quite noisy, it actually got a half decent score for what it is. The Enemax Fit didn't do very well at all. It got the lowest score of all of them. Max temperatures. This is basically the max temperature that I saw over all the runs that I did for each of the coolers. You can see that the, the uh, Hyper 212 did very, very well. And the Noctua also did very, very well only just breaching 60 Celsius, which is a great performance for, for the price of the coolers, especially the Hyper 212, which is not that expensive at all. The Red Dragon cooler, which as I said earlier, was a very cheap cooler, actually did very well. The Contact 12 managed to breach 80 Celsius, which isn't great, but it, you know, it's still adequate. But for this cooler, I'd really pay attention if you're gonna put a hotter CPU like a 10900K at it. The Animax Fit hit 100 Celsius, and we actually saw the CPU throttling, so Basically, this cooler is really not suitable for a 10700K or any top-line CPU. The max sound, so this is the max sound reading that I got when running all of the tests against each of these uh, coolers. The Noctua, unsurprisingly, with the Noctua fan on it, was the most silent. The Hyper 212, again, a great performer in all of the tests we've seen so far, did very well and wasn't that loud. Then the cheaper coolers that we've got, I'd say the much more budget-orientated coolers, really struggled. The Contact 12 did very well, considering, you know, it, it kept the temperatures reasonably well, but if you're wanting to look, go on silent running, it ain't the cooler for you. And as for the other two, at least the Red Dragon kept the CPU under 100 degrees, whereas the Animax Fit, oh boy. So we have our first elite table that I'm putting up. And as you can see, the Animax Fit is firmly in the relegation zone, shall we say. Uh, the current champions is the Noctua NHU-12S, and the Cooler Master Hyper 212 RGB Black. They both got 26 points. You can see the point scales in front of you. You know, they did reasonably well on everything, pretty much. They only really swapped score on a couple of points. For instance, that the, obviously the Nocta was slightly uh, quieter, but the Hypermax 212 did better on cost. So those two coolers, really, you can't go wrong with either of them. The, the Contact 12 and the Dragon Reaver, if you're not looking for silent operation and you're not looking to go, say, beyond the 10700K, they may be an option for you. If you, if you want to throw those coolers, as we saw on the likes of an AMD 2600, I think those coolers will do very well. All right, so I hope you like the new um, cooler lead table approach. It's very interesting, and I'm going to look at future coolers. I've already picked up a Thermaltake UX200 to test, so I'm going to do another video and add this to the cooler lead. And more interestingly, I've got a Corsair H100i Pro Platinum. So I'm also going to add this to lead. This will be the first IO that I'm going to throw into the test data. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on the additional videos for either of these two coolers. So plenty to look forward to there. And I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you like the new league table approach. Please any comment, leave any comments if you've got any feedback in terms of the uh, parameters for the scoring, if you'd like to see that changed. If you've got any coolers that you'd like me to look at, please leave a comment down below and I'll see you've get, try to get a hold of one so I can test that. Please make sure to subscribe, as I said earlier, and like the video because it helps with the older YouTube algorithm. And as always, take care. <laughs>